On the table today, we are going classic 93 Dinosaur with Mattel reimagining Kenner's line of Jurassic Park items from 1993 with the almighty classic red Tyrannosaurus Rex exclusive, a beautiful Rex redesign of one of my most beloved Jurassic Park dinosaurs of the past, plus a few other packs with Ian Malcolm and Dr. Grant, also re-inspired by the 93 classic. And then we've got what's in the box. What is in this box? I'm so curious what is inside this box. So lots to rediscover from 93, but reimagined in 2020, Squee. Let's get right to these awesome Jurassic Park dinosaurs. Squirrel, Squirrel Stampede. stampede. Ah! So here we have the oh so anticipated Jurassic Park 93 classic electronic real feel Tyrannosaurus Rex. A throwback to the original Kenner Tyrannosaurus Rex of red from way back in the day. And again, as I've stated many times, as much as I would like to show that Rex, my original 93 Rex is no more because it went zip lining down a building. My old college roommate and I thought it would be so interesting to build a seven floor zip line and hook up an old Rex to it. She fell seven straight stories, breaking her thunderous feet stomping action feature and never stopping, unless battery removal. She also had a giant kink in her tail, so I went on to retire her. Maybe one day I'll pick another one up on eBay or find it at a flea market or something. But today we have Mattel's recreation of the 93 classic and for the most part it feels really spot on accurate. I'm guessing maybe just slightly smaller, but still nonetheless pretty impressive. It measures about 21 inches in length and stands about 8 inches tall. I want to say the original may have had a taller footprint, but the length feels about right. The most exciting thing is they've tried to replicate the real feel. So on the tail and body section, we've got a squishiness to it. Much like the original, it had sound effects. If I recall the original, you would stomp on the ground for thunderous foot booming sound effects. This one is more towards the roar. And if I'm right, the original, you would squeeze a rib or something and it would open and close its mouth slightly and that function had broke. This one though, button on the back. Sometimes when you smash, it does activate that button, but right here. is your activation button. Opening and closing jaws are manual, which I actually prefer. That way if the battery goes dead, you can kind of still just do things. So I think they've recaptured her pretty well and color scheme. This is almost exactly that red and brown color scheme with a little bit of a yellow underbelly. So she's looking quite well. Let's see what we have on the back. So there we have her probably cut and paste into a great jungle backdrop, real feel, roar, chomp, and reveal. So that's the other fun newish feature of this one. She's gonna eat things and then digest through her abdomen belly that looks kind of painful. The original did not do that. That feature is a little more super colossal in a way. Other 93 classic things available. We've got the Dr. Ian Malcolm pack, Glider Escape. They've tried to re-replicate some of the goofier things of the 90s where they would put rocket packs, giant oversized grapple weapons, just ridiculous gear onto the scientists. Scientists who would never use that gear, but they did so in the toy form of Kenner, so pretty funny they did that. Also with Dr. Alan Grant, the Tactical Claw Pack. I decided not to pick up the Track and Explore Vehicle Pack. It just does not feel like Jurassic Park, especially 93 Jurassic Park. Maybe Lost World, but even then so. So I saved my money and actually got a second T-Rex. Oh, and I just saw this. Classic Megatron is pointing out there is a scan code on our Tyrannosaurus Rex, yes. Okay, so we are going to heed the warnings from Muldoon and open this up. He's saying something about safety, not having enough cages or electrical wire, but whatever, we're cool. Let's open up. I'm curious if just the top two cords will release or if she is foot embedded into the base. I'm guessing foot embedded too. Yep, she's foot embedded, so give me a couple seconds. And out of pack she is. Now I immediately feel like she is a little bit smaller than the original. I think the original had a much longer snout and just overall size, just a little bit larger, but we're still pretty close, we're still pretty close. She has a double articulated jaw from top and bottom and we've got tiny little forearms that are articulated with a hinge post and they're kind of soft and rubbery. Legs are articulated at the hip, pretty tight. 
they reach out. I'm not getting much of, there we go, it's a little tight there. Uh, they reach out, which I like, and um, rotate on a nice solid clicker. And those little ankles kind of rotate out a little bit, helping her fit into her box. Mattel certainly did their homework though. She certainly looks classic. She just has that look. The red, I think, is what does it. Just a lot of fun. A pretty close match they pulled off. So to feed her feature, uh, I don't really have a pack of mini dinosaurs around me right now. I guess I could just use squirrels. Yeah, squirrels will work. Thanks, Landry. You'll be a quick volunteer. So to fill up the dinosaur's tummy, just place animal inside mouth there and gulp away. Pretty pretty open mouth there. I think she would be just fine eating just about anything. That's a wide... Uh-oh, Landry's tail is a little stuck in there. Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> Maybe not the best to feed her a tall-tailed squirrel. A softer plastic dinosaur may help. Although, how about one of these new stone squirrels I picked up? By the way, we have to name the new gemstone squirrels. We've got a really pretty black one and a really pretty brown one. I'll have to set up a post soon on what we can call these two. So feed these up into the Rex's mouth. Oh, I think that one went all the way down. Let's just try one so we don't get them jammed. So after Rex has had her meal, it doesn't really come out the back end, but more of her tummy abdomen area. We can kind of reach in here, which I don't know, a little worrisome. I don't want to tear this. And somehow I can feel our stone squirrel Right there, that is some thick plastic, real feel. I feel like this is something from Alien or something. She's being chest bursted by a squirrel. Ah, get the squirrel out of there. Ah! It's loose in the studio. So be careful how far you chest bust, stomach bust a squirrel or dinosaur inside your Rex. Be very gentle to your plastic of real feel. Now somewhere on here we should have a scan code. I believe it's on one of the hips or leg. There we go. Almost in a damaged spot, like they real damaged feel. And I think we just hinge this open and there is our code. So no code on her feet. Her feet just have those embeds which go into the box. But her code is on her hip. Okay, getting out the Jurassic World Facts app on our smart devices uh, with Dino Tracker theme currently. Let's see if she's even loaded in yet. So let's give a scan. Oh, she's really loud right now. Scan away. Certainly there, we've got the old school mainframe. I love that. There she is, all in orange, red, yellow belly. Impressive, impressive all the way around in the desert. Got to remember this, she's in the desert. So what do we have for information about her? Well, there she is. She's about the height of uh, two guys standing up on top of each other or even more. A diet of meat, weight of four cars, origins of North America. Pretty good. As for a little game, what kind of game are we going to have with her? Well, we're probably going to search her down. And we are in the forest. Oh, see if I can get this just right. Now this car is also available for the Dino Tracker line. This car I think is a little bit of a better vehicle option than what they have for the 93 throwback. I just don't like that vehicle, it's not very interesting. This one though, I like the pickup truck work with it. I think I see her. She's kind of in the mist. So is she gonna be forest or desert? This is what always confuses me. Oh, and then we gotta catch her. Got her! Woohoo! In the lab, let's go to the lab. Also a fun moment here. Okay, so let's play around. She's gonna have four interesting problems. She's gonna, of course, wanna eat some meat. Definitely not carrots, right? Uh, rotate her around. She's got a couple issues. Uh, some that for the dirt, clean that off, and her other issue is more dirt. Double dirty. I don't think I've seen a double like that before. Get her in there. And some gouges, antibacterial spray. She's good, now we just have to uh, tell her where she exists. Desert, right? There we go, we just drag and drop, and we release her into the desert for round one. Bye, Rex, 
and we can play level two at another time. I miss all the extra little factoid quizzes on that app. I hope they bring that back some more. I can't remember if it's in there somewhere, but I certainly do like the little vet app. So there's her Rex. I'm so impressed with her. So very impressed. She runs about $50, a little crazy high, but she is the crown jewel of a Jurassic Park collector, so, so I can understand saving a little bit up for her. So one more time, let's listen in on what may be some classic T-Rex sounds via the button on the back. That one was really fierce. How about this one? Pretty good. And... Kind of grumbly on that. So I'm getting about three or four sounds, distinct sounds coming from with this one. And they do sound pretty classic. So now we can have some fun with these Retro 93 packs. I gotta see Dr. Ian Malcolm in his glider. So he's gliding after this Dilophosaur with, I don't know, is it safe to fire an RPG while in a light glider like that? Wouldn't it just throw you off and crash? But it's epic, the illustration is epic. The Dilophosaurus doesn't have a neck frill, which is interesting. I swear, this little trike, baby trike, came with like an Ellie action figure. We'll see how clever it matches or not. And a nice little demonstration of Malcolm on that glider. I can't wait to see this. It's going to be awesome. This is kind of fun, though. Everything is individually wrapped in paper. It's like a little mini Treasure X experience, looking for treasure in the various bags. I think it's just an unintentional packaging surprise. Who do we start with in our... Oh wow, look at that. It almost looks exactly like what Kenner had on one of their original figures. Was it Nedry who had one of these? I can't remember now, but that feels so old school. And how about this one? We've got chains and all sorts of gear to tie up our dinosaur. There's our RPG, so deadly. And maybe the glider wings. Oh, so that's the back of the glider. Doesn't look like that on the back of the box. And this pack is our RPG launcher. This pack must be Malcolm. Malcolm is here. And it's kind of probably like a sort of reissue of what we've seen from the Hammond collection, maybe. Yeah, he seems very Hammond collection-esque, a four inch figure of Malcolm, articulated at all the locations you would need articulation at. Kind of in an adventure field black suit with black gloves. Pretty good face sculpt, too. The glasses are a little clunky, but you know what? I feel like it's Jeff Goldblum. That was never the case with Kenner. Their figures just kind of had a random person look. So this might be the most adventuresome Malcolm out there in the figure collection. Ah, there's our baby trike. I think it was Ellie who was packed with a baby trike, very similar to this. Very similar in scale, but it might be very much completely different. Hard to say. I wish I still had my old collection. I. Had to give it up, but that is sad. And our final pack must be the Dilophosaurus. There she is. She's quite small, has a very bright, vivid mustard stripe going down her back. Is her name yellow or mustard? What do we know? Opening and closing mouth, moving arms. Legs, pretty basic, a little soft. We've got a coat on her back. Scaled to Malcolm, a little bit smaller, just up to his shoulders maybe in height. We had just opened that Amber Collection Dilophosaurus from late last year. This one is much larger and has that frill and a little more articulated. So a little more basic, kind of like what Kenner was all about back in the day. All right, how do we place this glider together? I think like this little notch fits into that little notch like like so. Oh, I almost broke the wings. Oh dear, I don't want to break my glider, it's so beautiful. Okay, glider built, then just take your Malcolm, loop one of his arms through this shoulder strap as it is permanently stuck. Back onto belt. I think we got him. I think we got him attached in there. So there he is with his Batman-esque glider. And then Dr. Malcolm, brilliant mathematician, chaotician, can fly about in a position he should never be in, uh, firing RPGs from a glider. How does this uh, fire, by the way? I forgot to look for the firing mechanism. It's stuck right now. Oh, right in front. Take that, Rex. And off he goes. 
As for the capture gear, I think you could just take this little claw and place on your trike as a little suitcase. You can take it with you on your airfare lines. And as for your Dilophosaurus, we've got a face mask, close that jaw, and place on those chains. Lower feet with the larger ones and smaller for the upper arms. She ain't going nowhere. Not so clever girl. As for the other classic 93 pack, we have Dr. Alan Grant with the Tactical Claw Pack. The Gallimimus and Small Velociraptor included. This imagery right here feels right out of Kenner. Gots to love the oversized claw weaponry. Although maybe not so oversized as what we saw Malcolm having and a small little Velociraptor in green and a Gallimimus who we we're sadly going to chain up too. How sad. Oh, it changes out, either grapple or claw. So let's go through all the tiny bags. Not so many bags with this one. So there's our Grant. In a quite athletic, fancy tactical jacket, Gallimimus. With some pretty good paint, purple and red on a tanned body. And... Very small Velociraptor, even smaller than what appeared on the box. And two very oversized grapple weapons, so two different weapons. Plus the capture gear for our Gallimimus. I thought these were going to be interchangeable. Oh, this is a suit for Grant to place on, some armor, and more cuffs for our Gallimimus. Kind of like a crossbow, really stuck. And a claw weapon with binoculars on the bottom. So there's our grapple, nothing. Nothing is more entertaining than an action figure with a grapple gun and wire. See if we can load this in, and a fire mechanism on the back, I think. Oh, oh Grant, sorry, didn't mean to take you out. And then I can like maybe hook him back, back in off the screen. Always entertaining grappler weapons. It is huge though, I mean, this is probably 200 pounds if this was replicated in real life at this scale. I don't know if Grant could hold on to it. Maybe if he was wearing onto this extra armor, like maybe it's like a muscle suit that increases his strength. By the way, looking closer up at Tactical Grant, I like to call him Far Cry from Casual a Dinosaur bone digging Grant. Um, yeah, this one's quite fun. Definitely ready to uh, put on the grapple and catch dinosaurs, which is not on his resume. So yeah, if you want to get him to hold this realistically 200 pound grapple, probably uh, grip on the bottom for a hand there and maybe take another hand and place underneath one of these um, arms off to the side and then fire away at our little tiny baby Velociraptor. Give it a shot. I'm helping him out quite a bit. Oh, didn't get him. Didn't get him. The other weaponry here is just a standard claw. This feels a little more uh, realistic for scale. It's probably only 100 pounds in real life. Maybe, maybe 80, depending on how light the carbon fiber is. And firing away, it extends an arm instead of firing. And then you can hook on to your dinosaur. Kind of grab him like so. That works. That's actually a little more fun than the grapple is right now. And Gallimimus is here. Got a lot of capture gear. This poor Gallimimus. I feel like I just feel evil putting these things on them. So you got that, you got leg restraints. And again, binoculars. So pretty fun classic inspired packs with Malcolm, Tactical Grant. And both of these have scan codes, so let's take a look at their scan bars. See what we can discover for each of them. Let's try the Dilophosaurus first. Pretty good animation in green she is. I always like this little finger going back and forth, enticing the dinosaur. It should grab on. It would be really funny if she would bite your finger. At least the meat sores would be great. What do we have for some information? About the height of a human, a diet of meat, and the weight of two pigs, also found in North America. So pretty good representation of her. With the frill. No frill on the toy. As for our Gallimimus... Loading up. Oh, she's so bright in the desert. Wow, that's one vivid dinosaur. I love how they've recreated the toys with the color scheme even in this app. It's been pretty fun that way. Pretty good looking Gallimimus. I would assume she would run around more of the jungle, but that's just from what I saw in Jurassic Park. Information! A little bit taller than a human, diet of cabbage, and the weight of two pigs found in Central Asia. Pretty cool and interesting. Gallimimus, everyone. 
And of course, you could do some more capture games with them. I'm going to pass because we've done that before as we have one more mystery box to open. What? What is in the mystery box? And we open up. Dinosaur squirrel! Oh, I knew we'd see that again. Get out of here. Get out of here, chest busting dinosaur squirrel. What we have found is the Jurassic Park 30th Anniversary Dr. Alan Grant Velociraptor Pack. I finally found a more reasonable deal for this pack. When it first appeared on Amazon, it was running way over 50. I just could not uh, spend that kind of money on just one figure and a Velociraptor, but it's now dropped down to 30, which is a little more reasonable. Kind of interesting that it's disguised in this cardboard pack. We've got the graphics of the Hammond collection inside, and there we have our Dr. Alan Grant Jurassic Park Three. So this is a few years after the 93, uh, but we've got a great Grant inspired by that movie and a really nice looking white Velociraptor with some muddy spots, the eggs and the case to steal them from, and a nice looking Dr. Grant figure. Well, his adventure clothes look pretty good. His face sculpt, a eh, little so-so. They haven't captured him perfectly, but glad to finally see these. Let's get them out a little closer. So there's our Grant figure in a very, what could I say, nice plaidish church shirt almost, like something you would wear at church. High fanciness. He's got a backpack, he's got the egg case, I think the egg case can open and you can place eggs inside. Oh, we sure can. So we've got a couple eggs included. That's really neat. I did not expect that the eggs could fit in this little pack. And then we've got our Velociraptor, Alan. Really cool looking Velociraptor. Now it's been like over 10 years since I've watched Jurassic Park 3. It's kind of the weaker one of the series. There are some really interesting cool scenes. So I gotta go back and check this out. See if this Velociraptor matches into the show. Stark white with the spots, really great paint. Black claws, black claws both top and bottom, that's well done. Great close-up paint work on its head. And overall body, great articulation with these. It is a Hammond collection, so full of points of articulation. And again, this figure pack is now appearing Amazon for about 30, which is very reasonably close to most of the Hammond collection items. Don't believe there's scan codes on this one though because of the high articulation. Ah, I really like that shirt shirt, Grant. Oh no, wait, the Dilophosaurus has the glider. Ah, ah, shoo, Dilophosaurus glider, shoo, ah, ah, ah. And that's the Jurassic Park Classic 93 collection recreation of Mattel. Pretty awesome to see and go back to yesteryear, but in the year 2020 squee. If you liked today's video, please give us a squike, squirrel eye, squamant, your favorite classic Jurassic Park dinosaur. Thank you so much for watching. That's what I have to say about that. Oh no, the raptor's got the grapple.